Hey YouTube, it's me, Forever Essen here, and we are back for another Genshin Impact video. And this time around, yes, as you can see, Lantern Ride Festival is upon us. And what a special day to stream that specific event. Because, as you can see, well, we have, um, a story quest to do regarding that. So, I'll get around to doing it today and of course as you can see right at the bottom, bottom here we have 18 days in order to well get everything in order for the Lantern Ride Festival uh, I'll do some some of the uh, Chinyu Vale related contents uh, later in the stream uh, because I still need to have some things done regarding the specific region and yeah, uh, I'll be trying to um, get it as far as possible and uh, trying to relish in the fact that we're going to see characters that we haven't seen for so long. And voiced as well, obviously. That is, that is definitely a huge difference. But yeah, um, uh, if on the side of YouTube you guys are, well, excited about this content that's arriving to YouTube in a timely fashion, then you know what to do. Make sure to leave a like, subscribe, let you never hit that subscribe button in your life. Also, hit that notification bell so you can never miss a video. And also, jump over at twitch.tv forward slash forever as and where I do uh, most of my Genshin Impact streams and Hongai Star Rail streams, which are going to be... Uh, which, which we are... Uh, having some videos related to that coming up on YouTube uh, in a timely fashion as well. But yeah, uh, Twitch, uh, follow me on the social, Instagrams, Instagram, X <laughs> or Twitter, as you want. And um, also, uh, it is going to be the time where I start uploading some stuff to my Patreon page. So if you want to be a member of the Forever Exclusives and be the part, the part of the family as a whole, and you know what to do, head over there and show your support. And also, the final part, well, we have a Discord server as well. If you want to be a part of the family even further than that, then you can all head over to the Forever, Forever Gang and uh, chat with uh, lots of members around, I mean, in this part, and be a part of the community. <laughs> That we're creating little by little. But yeah, that is going to be all the information I wanted to convey to you all. So I guess that uh, it is a better time as ever to start this fantastic event that is around every year known as the Lantern Rite Festival. Let's get going. Look at all the lanterns. Are they... Are they... Zhao lanterns? Because that's what... Uh, what, that, what that, that's what it was in last year's lantern ride. Wow. Look at the chites. Is there, is there a top tight? Oh, I see the whoop of flower tights as well. <laughs> wow. Look at all that. Sorry, my lad. Uh, oh. Oh, these kids are excited. <laughs> these kids are definitely excited, it seems. this <laughs> Wow 
Okay. Uh, Jiaxing? Just, just, just a bit more prep. This event will be, it'll be even doper. This person seems to be busy preparing an event and doesn't have much time for idle banter. Uh, yeah, it seems like it. Um... to me. Sorry. I was just reminiscing about my hometown. Um, what are you doing? I'm waiting for a boat. A boat that will come at an unknown time. A boat that will take me home. My name is Vlad. I was transferred from my, leeway, from my home country at Nizhnaya and to come here, work here in Liwe. I've already been in this city for some time now, but really it's impossible for me to fit in here. So I've sent an application to headquarters to be transferred back home, but I don't know when the boat will arrive. Even though I leave here, I don't interact at all with the people of this city, except for just one person. Tell me about that person. She is also a guard at the Northland Bank like me, except I have the day shift and she has the night shift. Yeah, I know about her. It's as if I'm the sun and she's the moon. <clears throat> Well, she's here. Don't you know? Also, Sun and Moon? No, no, sir. <laughs> Even though we are aware of one another's, another's existence, our paths will never meet. I beg to differ, she's right next to you. You just have to look around. Turn around. <laughs> so there is to it. I guess that's just how it is it's meant to be. Then one day out of blue, she left a letter for me right where we changed the guard. We've been writing each other as pen pals ever since. Although I can't wait for the boat to arrive, reading her letter is the only thing that makes my heart feel at ease. Well, she's right next to you. And you're, you're back. Well, okay, well. It was nice talking, talking to you, Vlad. Definitely. Is this where it's going to be the Warshaw dancing? Look at all the preparations here. Ah. <laughs> well, that's definitely Something to behold? <laughs> also? Being it's still on turn. Yeah. I did it. Also, Fujin, it's nice to see you. Even though you're just a type. Alright, well, I guess I should not delay any longer, and I just see Charlotte and Katrin here. Let's say hi. Traveler and Paimon. Chiching, it's been too long, my girl. Oh, we're not interrupting anything, are we? Uh. <laughs> not at all. I wasn't in the middle of an interview or anything. I was just asking Miss Kuching about purchasing a kite. A kite? Yeah, definitely. A kite? Are you buying some regional specialties to bring back to Fontaine? Come on, Paimon. Be more. Be more intelligent or smart or anything. The kite, what do you think it's for? Do you, do you not see all the kites that there is here in the Uwe Harbor? Come on! Well, yes. And... <laughs> it seems you haven't heard yet. The theme of this year's lantern rite is kites. Yeah, I mean, look around you. Ah, oh, so that's why Paimon has seen so many floating in the sky. I mean, yeah. <laughs> Li 
Anyway, harbor is always changing, so it is only fitting that lantern light should change in turn. I don't know why there was something like that in the middle of the sentence here. Okay. Uh, the Leeway Hub is always changing, so it is only fitting that Lantern Rite should change in turn. True, true. The Qixing believes it would benefit Liyue to build on our own cultural foundation by embracing the technologies of other nations. After all, it is said that the stones of another mountain may serve to better polish one's own jade. But that is shot. This jammer shot is really great. With all the tapestries of different colors. Wow. And the umbrellas as well. Yeah, remember my business meeting with Tian Chuen Ningguang the last time I was in Liyue Harbor? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I That's remember. what it was about. Oh, alright. But all I really did was use my network to introduce Lady Ningguang to some interesting people. I'd let you for I'm not sure that quite counts as fostering cooperation. Hmm. In the end, we decided to combine Liyue's traditional art of kite making with Fontaine's mechanical vertical lifting device. Mechanical vertical lifting device. Yeah. A Fontaine and Liyue collaboration. You'd love to see it. Mechanical lifting device? Sounds pretty impressive. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but don't kites just use the wind to fly? Why would you need to add something mechanical? Uh, it's just it's just a nice touch. Nice touch of also, I see the two guys in the back there. Hmm. They seem um, I don't know. They seem to have some business with us. With the one with the red bands <laughs> looking at us like that. Well, you've actually just answered your own question, Paimon. Yeah. How high and far a kite can fly depends as much on the weather conditions as on the skill of the person holding the string. Right. But as soon as there's no wind, you can only flail about helplessly like a sweet flower medaka out of water. Experience doesn't matter at that point. Exactly. Liyue is now a nation ruled by humans, after all. It's about time we had the power to make a kite fly, don't you think? Yeah, truly. Plus, the easier we can make it to enjoy, the more people will want to participate. Uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, it sounds awesome, to be honest. Right? I also thought it was a novel idea. Plus, it shouldn't cost much to do. I mean... <laughs> Lady Ninborn is actually... Uh, doesn't have a lot of money, so you can also ask her, you know. With Miss Charlotte's help, everything has gone smoothly. Our new mechanical kites are already available to purchase from a stall in the harbor. We're having trouble keeping up with demand. Well, uh, I guess. <laughs> we also gave quite a bit of thought to the price. We didn't want it to be too much more expensive than a traditional kite. Okay. Ooh! Turns out you two and Ningguang like playing with toys just as much as Hi, Mon. Um, wait, how, how, how much time have we been together? How long have we been together? I don't think I've seen you even once hold a toy. Unless I'm mistaken. I don't know. Uh, toys? They're not exactly <laughs> toys. <laughs> Uh, what are they, uh, Kuching? You see, Miss Kuching, that does seem to be everyone's first reaction. <laughs> hmm. Although kites are one of our most time honored cultural relics, outside of their use in certain ceremonies, I suppose they're considered playthings more than anything now. Hmm. Yeah. But to me, there's so much more than that. What do they represent to you, Kaching? Think for a second about how remarkable it is that a flimsy paper kite attached to a string has the capacity to touch the sky. It is this slight piece of paper that also carries the weight of Liyue's cultural traditions. Mm. 
That's fair, to be honest. Yeah. There's an old poem that goes, O kite born of paper, flying true and sound, a lone traveler wanders, just waiting to be found. Okay, apparent, apparent. Yeah, okay, so apparently she didn't say the whole lot. <clears throat> let me, uh, let me read that again for... Well, to help understand it a lot better than what she said. <clears throat> There's an old poem that goes, O child born of paper flying true and sound, A lone traveler wanders just waiting to be found. Send them love, send them word, send them homeward bound. In the past, poets from Liyue used kites to symbolize a feeling of longing, or evoke the peacefulness of idyllic rural scenery. Kites to symbolize a feeling of longing, right? And evoke the peacefulness of idyllic rural scenery. If right. the people of today can derive enjoyment from this activity, they will not only be more likely to better appreciate the tradition, but also to pass it down to the people of tomorrow. True. That's the coaching we know. Hmm? Always thinking five steps ahead of anyone else. Yeah, well, she's motivated. Well, she's motivated and uh, ambitious and... She's really to to be hard working, I suppose. Yeah. Well said, That's my girl. Ching. I've learned quite a bit myself. <laughs> <laughs> as long as you're willing to listen, I'm happy to share. Gotcha, Ching. Your your blessing in disguise. I also know quite a lot about the various folk traditions related to kites. For example, whenever a kite blew away, people would say it was the Adepti that summoned the wind to take it away as an offering. <laughs> that way, you can turn an unfortunate event into an auspicious one. Okay. What about something more fun? Do you know anything like that? Fun, you say? Hmm. More fun. Hmm. <laughs> hmm let me think. Yeah. Oh. I suppose we should first talk about how kites are made. It's another one of our precious forms of traditional craftsmanship. The crafting of kites. My grandfather told me that, back when he was a boy, children learned the art of kite making step by step from their elders. That's a nice shot too. Wow. Your verse never misses, it seems, when it comes to the, the games. <clears throat> First, you use the thin strips of bamboo to construct the frame. Then, you draw a design of your choice on a piece of paper, mm -hmm. paste it onto the frame, and tie on the string. Right, so that's the process. Do not make it wrong. Then, you look towards the sky and release the kite to soar among the clouds. That's so poetic. Some people write down certain names or desires on their kites, cut the string, and let them fly free. Others may place particular thoughts or meaning into the design itself. Mm. Yeah, that's... that's I'm, I'm, it's almost the same principle as the Zhao Lanterns. Are certain designs associated with certain meanings? <laughs> I'm gonna jot all of this down. Now, of course, Charlotte is going to get all the exclusives. Hmm. Well, for example, kites in the shape of a butterfly typically symbolize freedom, happiness, mm -hmm. or the desire to break free. Right. Fascinating. What else can you tell me? <laughs> the scissored tailed swallow is the most classic design. It symbolizes good fortune and joyful tidings. Different colors also have small variations in meaning. Are these commonly understood meanings and symbols in the U.S.? Kind of like the language of flowers in Fontaine. Hmm, I believe so. Most have probably heard something about it from their elders at some point. Hmm. It 
if you're interested, Miss Charlotte, I have several books on the topic that I could lend you. They could be a useful reference. Yeah, okay. These guys... These guys are, are, sh are quite shady. <laughs> I don't know what they're planning. But, um... I don't know. That would be a huge help! Great! Looks like I've got the outline for quite the article on my hands. Well, I uh, hope it goes well, Charlotte. Perfect! We're gonna take a look around! Yep. Then I'll show Miss Charlotte to my home for a little while. Your home? <laughs> okay. Um... Sure. I almost forgot. The Ministry of Civil Affairs is hosting a kite flying contest on the night of Lantern Rite. A kite flying contest? If you're interested, you're more than welcome to bring a kite and participate. Yeah. Uh, so a kite flying contest. What are the regulations? What are the rules? Do you, is it that your kite should be higher than the others? Or maybe it's about maintaining form? Or maybe the, the most... Well... Shoot design? I don't know. The rules are simple. Okay. Whoever flies their kite the highest and furthest oh. within the time limit will receive a special honor <laughs> along with a secret prize. Okay, so. Okay, so. <laughs> I, was not, I was not wrong. I just. I was just missing, missing one rule. The fact that I had. Uh, this giant has to do the furthest. I've already prepared more than enough empty film for the event. I can see the spectacle already. Well, we'll be there. Oh, Paimon was on board the moment you said secret prize. Yeah, <laughs> of course you'd be. Then I'll look forward to seeing your performance. Uh -huh. See you then! See you then! See you. Okay, Paimon, what do you want to do? Wait, Traveler? Take a peek to your right. Yeah, I Did noticed. You see those two people lurking over there? Yeah, yeah, definitely. I saw them, Paimon. Hmm, quite shady indeed. Is it just Paimon? Or were they staring at us the whole time we were talking to Kuching and Charlotte just now? Hmm, they seem fishy. I mean, I agree. <laughs> Actually, the chi thing do attract a lot of attention. Something's up. Paimon just has a bad feeling. Yeah, I concur. Do you think they could be treasure hoarders? They always seem to be stirring up trouble during Lantern Rite. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the last time uh, that the Lantern Rite Festival was in order, was it the last time or the time before that, the, the, last, the last time? But, um, but yeah. <laughs> the treasure hoarders were acquiring s lots of fireworks because they wanted to have their own little celebrations. So now I, I maybe they want their kites because they want to be able to participate and have uh, to win the secret secret prize. I don't know. Um, they always seem to be stirring up trouble during Lantern Raid. Oh, I'm on sick of waiting around for something bad to happen. We should strike first, you know? Follow <laughs> their plans before they even begin? Uh, what? S <laughs> <laughs> uh, Paimon, I don't see you anymore. Are you a Shimatsuban? Uh, I mean, Sayu... Sa Sayu is actually... Uh, Sleep, so I mean, she's asleep most of the time, so yeah, she's a ninja, that's for sure. You go right, Paimon will go left. Yeah, <laughs> you go right. <laughs> Wait, Paimon, <laughs> the vibrant hero is a lot in Spring Breeze Part One. <laughs> you go right, they go there. Um. <sighs> I 
Zhihua. Uh, could you, didn't you explain to me what happened just now? It seems that Paimon does, when zooming. Um, please tell me you saw that. And uh, nope. Ah, well, that's a bother. Um, can you tell me at least where she went? Nope. <sighs> well, at least thank you for, well, nothing. Clearly you're no use to me, Zhihua. <sighs> oh, Paimon, what did you do? It is with such an air of urgency that you appear before us. Your comportment suggests you believe us to have committed some heinous crime. Perhaps you could enlighten us as to your intentions. Is it, is it me? Or does that sound a lot like... Uh... You know... Um... Ah... Uh, you know the Adepti? Like, one of the... Is it Mount... Moonchaver? Moonchaver? Mountain Shaper? Could be? Yeah. One of them has the same low voice. Or, uh, yeah, low tone. I don't know. Whoa, where did this buddy daddy come from? Fuddy daddy come from? You should be the one doing the enlightening, buddy. If it's just them... This one, this would be really insane, but okay, Paimon, relax. Uh. One bears no secrets before two such as yourselves. <laughs> you stand in the presence of the mighty and illuminated Adeptus, Moon Carver. <laughs> I, I promise, this, I promise, guys, this is my first time actually looking at this Lantern Rise Festival. I didn't know that. I was right on the money when it comes to <laughs> these guys. It's the voice that that tilted me in the right direction. <laughs> I was right though. I I'm happy about that. <laughs> I was right. Okay, well I uh Wow. For the purpose of this foray into the mortal realm, however, Ho you may address one as Ho Jong. Ho. Okay. For this purpose is foray into the mortal realm, however, you may address one as Ho Jong. Okay. Um. Well, um. So, um. You followed, uh. Jean Yun into the mortal realm to witness this Lantern Ride Festival, it seems. Well, um, happy to make your acquaintances uh, on this special occasion that is the Lantern Ride Festival, Montrover, Mountain Shaper. Truly, uh, this is a, a rare occasion. Maybe, yeah, I guess maybe he saw Jean Yun in her, well, mortal body? Body? I don't know. And maybe they wanted to do the same in order to understand mortals and and see what all the, the foray is about. Uh, you may want to hold your tongue, Paimon. Uh, how so? Because she's zooming. Because you know her name. Let Paimon guess. You're supposed to be Mountain Shaper, right? Unless, unless he's not Mountain Shaper. Yeah. Maybe he's not Mountain Shaper. Maybe he is. I don't know. Indeed. 
Moonfather and myself have descended upon the mortal realm for okay. a visit. Mountain the two Sheep, of you okay. may call me Jiru. Jiru. Jiru? Jiru. Moonfather and myself have descended upon the mortal realm for a visit. The two of you may call me Jiru. So, so Jiru and Hojong. Ah, okay. So, let me, let me, let me sum up all their names. So, Cloud Retainer is Jian Yun. Uh, Mountain Shaper. No, no. Moon Carver is Hojon. And. Moon. Wait. Moon Carver is Hojon, yes. And Mountain Shaper is Jiehu. good idea. Technically, it seems like uh, they're not impersonating anyone. Uh, they are the real deal. No one would have uh, colored veins such as them and be technically uh, having the same hues and colors that are significant to their adepti form. Preposterous. Yeah. Utterly preposterous. Yeah, like I said, uh, apparently, <laughs> apparently this is not, this is not a good thing. Apparently, Paimon, you did something wrong. Well, 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 wait, 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 wait. If you really are who you claim to be, perhaps you can prove it? I mean, uh, he has adept type powers? <sighs> yep, Mountain Shaper. I know. I know. <clears throat> uh. <sighs> During the last lantern rite, we gathered at Mount Hulao with Rex Lapis and made use of Cloud Retainer's supreme cuisine machine to prepare bamboo shoot soup. Perhaps you have some recollection? Oh, yes, I remember, yeah. We gathered Mount Hula with Red Slapis and made use of Cloud Retainer's supreme cuisine machine to, ba to pro <laughs> prepare bamboo shoot soup. Perhaps you have some recollection. Yes, I do. We gathered Mount Hula with Red Slapis and made use of Cloud Retainer's supreme cuisine machine to prepare bamboo shoot soup. Perhaps you have some recollection. The flavor of that soup was more than enough to whet one's appetite. Wow. As such, Cloud Retainer assented to my use of the device beyond that singular occasion. Providing other recipes to boot. Since then, one has dabbled in the pleasures of the culinary arts whenever time allows. Uh, uh, Jiru, yeah, you are doing right. You are doing everything right. You are slowly understanding, which is uh, really nice to see. Dabbled upon one's last sojourn to your mountain. Did you not immediately attempt to hide the device <laughs> behind a chunk of amber as soon as one's presence was known? <laughs> they have a little banter, it seems. I was trying to test uh, the device for his own use. That's funny. Uh. <laughs> Did one not speak up on your behalf but a moment ago? This is how you choose to repay that kindness? <laughs> At that One time. is simply trying to emphasize the veracity of our claim. <laughs> that does not mean you should reveal personal matters so readily. They might think huh? one bears no difference from Cloud Retainer. Ah. Forget it. One does not have the breath to waste on such petty trifles. Yeah. I suppose they really are the Adepti. But yeah, I mean, if someone says one. This is not the typical way of actually talking to somebody, except if they are, well, 
should I say, <laughs> in the highest state that you are. And this is uh, definitely related to the depth eye. So, yeah, I suppose they really are the depth eye. Uh, that might have been more detail than we needed. Seems <laughs> like you two are the real deal, and I'm on sorry for suspecting you. Yeah, you sure. You, you should, you should. Definitely. <laughs> Yeah, of course, Paimon, because you actually uh, suspected them and uh, they feel quite outraged at your comments. Uh, take it as a compliment to the, to the quality of the disguise. You indeed have an agile mind. Mm -hmm. Cloud Retainer was not mistaken in her high estimation of you. Yeah, I mean, Jean Yun? Yeah, she knows. We're best buds. <laughs> Curious about something. It's just. Well, it's just what? Paimon can understand why Mountain Shaper is here, but why did you decide to come to the city, Moon Carver? It's not really your thing, is it? Hmm. Yeah. Maybe you were forced to come by Mountain. Uh, Mount, yeah, Mountain Shaper. Maybe. <sighs> yeah. Seems like it. It is but an inevitable, inevitable eventuality. They <laughs> say it at the same time. It is but an inevitable eventuality. Long have the mountains remained strangely idle since Cloud Retainers moved to Liyue. Ah, so it felt that lonely. I see. Yeah. With Lantern right near at hand, one would expect Cloud Retainer to provide us with an account of the festivities in advance. Mm -hmm. Yet to this day, she has failed to appear. Oh, she's been in my A. So you miss her, guys. That's what it is. Cloud Retainer is hardly the forgetful sort. Mm hmm So the fact that uh, she was not there to deliver all the uh, details for the festivities in advance made you feel a bit, a bit left out, it seems. Yeah, I understand. One must never rest idle in the face of that which demands action. And since our acquaintances dwell in Liyue Harbor, we had to travel here in human form to avail ourselves of their aid. Cloud retainers, in this case. <laughs> so, to seek Cloud Tainer, you guys, um, well, traveled here in human form to to search for Jian Yun or Cloud Retainer. But a moment ago, one heard you speak of a mechanical kite of sorts. Mm -hmm. It appears the essence of the situation has hitherto revealed itself. <laughs> now, it is time for one to retire back to one's abode. I mean, you could stay, Ho Jean. You could stay. Uh, it is... You would see how much Lantern Rite is special in the hearts of all uh, Liwei people. In, in the Liwei, in Liwei Harbor. And all places in Liwei as well. Maybe you should stay, yeah. Huh. So, you're not looking for Cloud Retainer anymore? Perhaps there are aspects of Cloud Retainer's temperament that remain opaque to young Paimon. Opaque. Given one's understanding, one can only imagine the anger that now consumes her. Oh, because it was not her... Um, <laughs> it was not her mechanisms that uh, helped in configuring uh, the the kites, the mechanical kites. It was the collaboration between Fontaine and Liwei that did that. Cloud Retainer is of a proud and arrogant disposition. Uh -huh. She holds the belief that her skill in mechanics surpasses that of all others. Yeah. One can be quite certain it is hardly with an open mind that she regards the arrival of this new technology. She sees this. She she sees this as a competition. Or as a challenge, rather, yeah. One surmises that she has shut herself away, refused all company, and buried herself in the study of her own creations. To call on her would only invite her rebuke. Ah, see. However, if you do happen to cross paths with her over the next few days, do pass along one's regards. Yep, and uh, apparently, apparently Mount <laughs> Charver agrees. Sure, leave it to us! Yep, leave it to us. 
Although you should stay. I like your designs, guys. You should, you should stay. And I'm, I'm sure that if they are in uh, well, human, they have the human bodies here, that means that uh, they will soon be playable characters as well. Hmm. I mean, I think they could be playable characters. I don't know. Have a safe trip back, enjoy the scenery, and happy lantern ride! Happy lantern ride. Thank you for your kind words. We shall now depart. <laughs> Look at the dodgy behind. You should not depart, you should stay. <sighs> we got all worked out for nothing, huh? I mean, you! All that trouble and it turned out to be people we knew all along! You dropped all worked top of nothing, Paimon. I just followed you. You said, <laughs> you said you go left, I go right. <sighs> Anyways, I mean, I, I, I suppose that I said that they were quite shady, but hey, all matters resolved. Well, it's still pretty early. Let's head over and check out the kite stalls. Sure. Paimon wants to see what kinds of kites we can buy to use in the competition. The bigger and prettier, the better. The bigger and prettier, the better, eh? Hmm. Seems like it. Go to the kite stall. Uh, where is that? Wait. Come oh. on. Sweet. Guys! Jehu! Hosan! Come back! Over <laughs> there, but I can show you. There are not streams over there. Because when it comes to streaming over YouTube, it's quite complicated. Hi, I'm Lin Long. I run an antiques shop called uh, Jiru Antiques. How may I help you? About kites. They carry people's files into the skies. Don't you think that's quite similar to how Zhao lanterns work? Yeah, they do. This year's theme is kites, which connects with the idea of those lanterns in interesting ways. I wonder if there are any legends that also link the two. Should there be any link to ancient relics, that would make for a most captivating story. Yep, yeah, but I'm not finished talking with you, Lane Long, uh, regarding the nameless treasure. If my guess isn't off, the object you brought previously is one of three. It will only be complete once all three objects are gathered here, together. Wait. You could find them all, and I would be more than willing to make you a generous offer. Okay, I fear that may, they may be from too ancient a time, however, and that gathering them could be difficult. Found all three. You actually managed to put them together? Please let me see. Name these three patterns when put together to tell the story of Ishtaha. Well, you don't say. This train must be the Adeptus Mountain Shaper. And this deer might be Moon Charter, this last one. A cloud retainer? Huh? It seems like this pattern has been intentionally ground away by someone to the point where I can't make it out. Who was the third adeptus? Forget. These matters are beyond my knowledge. Regardless, this treasure is complete. It will definitely sell well. So, would you like to take it for a keepsake, or would you prefer it to sell it to me? I'll pay you a pretty sum. It's yours. I mean, I don't have any. Yeah, don't have any avail on this specific specific case. Well, Sean, uh, have a nice day. I remember you. You were part of the Aratachi Blazing Army Beetle Battle Book Camp, it seems. And I beat you. Do you know how? Well, stills, I suppose. <clears throat> but anyways, um. Genuine. Z Z genuine. Right. Okay. Let's see. Welcome. Are the two of you looking to buy a kite? Yes. Would you like me to go over the different designs? Sure. Ooh, assistant kill 12! And a butterfly! And oh! <laughs> okay, Pyro, calm down. Jeez. Uh, this jade chamber design is our newest. Newest. It's been selling like crazy over the past two days. Yeah, but that means that everyone actually has that. 
Yeah. If it's been selling like crazy over the past two days, and everyone has this uh, uh, jade chamber trait. Does it also have a unique meaning? Does it also have a unique meaning? Uh, of course. The jade chamber symbolizes wealth and abundance. The kite bearing its design is said to bring riches in the future to those who fly it. <laughs> of, co of course, the jade chamber symbolizes wealth and abundance. The kite bearing its design is said to bring riches in the future to those who fly it. I apologize for the interruption, but are all your wares Andrew. in order, Miss Genuine? Genuine. Quite close to a character that we see in Hauntai Star as well. A uh, certain general, the Sianjil La Fu. Right? I apologize for the interruption, but are all your wares in order, Miss Genuine? Uh, yes, yes, they're mm -hmm. just over there. The paper, bamboo, and dyes. All the necessary kite making materials. Right. Wonderful. I'll pack them up and get a guard to deliver the goods to Yilong Wharf for you. Yilong Wharf. Okay. Yilong Wharf? Mm hmm. Oh, wonder what that place is like during Lantern Ride. Paima would love to go take a look. Uh, me too, actually. Well, if the two of you are interested in going to Yilong Wharf, then could I trouble you to find Gaming and deliver these goods together? <laughs> are we are we going to see Gavin? Is Gavin the guard you just mentioned? Seems like it. Yes. The communications office handles shipments and transports around Lira. He works for the Secure Transport Agency, one of our sub-organizations. Hmm. Huh. Uh, the problem is, many of my colleagues have taken leave during Lantern Rite to spend time with their families. So, our available workforce has seen a dramatic decrease recently. Well... Uh, it's uh, actually a, a good point that I actually unlocked all the waypoints in Yellow Wharf so that uh, I may go straight to there. It's uh, a good point that I actually uh, worked on that specific uh, exploration in the, in the recent streams that I did. Otherwise I would have been in quite a, quite a bit of a pickle. If you were willing to help out, then I could get a head start on my next appointment. You do seem really pressed for time. <laughs> we'll help, but we also expect to be compensated. Oh, wonderful. Uh, you will, of course, be compensated for your efforts. Now, at this time of day, coming should be somewhere in the vicinity. Uh, just follow the main road until you see the head of a Wusho dance costume. Should be on your right. On your right. Yes, I mean, I, I think I saw that earlier. Be sure to come back if you'd like to buy a kite. I'll even give you a discount. A discount, eh? Nice. I love discounts. <laughs> Follow the instructions to find Garmin. Uh, can I talk to you more? By the way, do you know my aunt? Everyone calls her Granny Shan. Yes, I... Uh, yeah. I've heard her mention Garmin before. Apparently he's a nice outgoing fellow and all-around good guy. Yeah, I think I saw him, yeah. <laughs> Alright, genuine. Let's have a look and go straight. And there he is. There's my boy. Wait, I thought we had an agreement. A loser buys dim sum tomorrow? <laughs> look at you. Scowl like that for much longer and your face might stay that way. <laughs> hey now, don't be upset. How about this? You extend the invitation, and I'll pay. What a design. Can't wait to get him. Uh, no way, Gaming. You're always the one picking up the tab. I'm not trying to be a sore loser. <laughs> I just didn't expect you to come from behind to win like that. <laughs> <laughs> that was nothing. All in a day's work, friend. The eye design. The eye design, the pupils and stuff. It's crazy. <clears throat> The hair as well. Yeah, his design speaks awesomeness. <laughs> that was nothing. All in a day's work, friend. Perfect. Coming is here. 
Sorry to interrupt, Gami. Mm. I just spoke to a guy from the communications office who needs you to deliver some goods to Elon Ward. Oh, that must have been Longjo. Looks like I got to work. You gotta go. <laughs> sure, go do your thing. Uh, let's have a rematch when you get back. I won't let you win so easily next time. Mm -hmm. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty, you can hand the goods over to me. Must have been heavy hauling them all this way. Let me take them off your hands. Eh, wasn't that bad. It's just some kite making materials. Plus, we didn't have to walk very far. <laughs> kite making materials. I see, I see. Uh, I'm glad it wasn't too much trouble, Paimon. Still, I owe you one. Yeah. <laughs> ah, and you must be the traveler. It's nice to meet you. Thanks for your help. Uh, you know me? Huh? You know us? I mean, yeah, you know us? <laughs> I forgot. <laughs> there probably aren't many in Liyue who don't. I've heard quite a bit about you two. You're quite well known around these parts. Well, I mean, uh, I've got quite a reputation, it seems. Oh, and please excuse Longzhou if he forgot to thank you. Uh, take my things in his place. All around, good guy. Coming. He's a good guy. He's just been super busy lately. Running around from place to place. Don't be too hard on him, yeah? I can't wait to see a time where... When, um, Jamming and Arataki Ito actually meet. This is going to be amazing. <laughs> no offense necessary. So, you here for Lantern, right? Yes, we do. Perfect. We'll go together then. I'm good with directions, so just follow me. Trust me, I know my way around. We can exchange stories, tell jokes, or just chat along the way. Sure. Oh, and there are a couple of good places to eat along our route. We can stop and grab a bite when it's time. The ingredients are fresh, the portions are generous, and the prices won't break the bank. You can order anything, and I promise you won't be disappointed. Order anything? Anything. <laughs> Oh, uh, look at that. Look at this. Paimon seems to be drooling already. Hey, did you really have to call Paimon out like that in front of our new friend? I mean, hey, you do the same to me, Paimon. <laughs> Don't worry, I understand. I joke around like that with my friends, too. <laughs> it just shows how close you are. Do you need to pack anything up before we hit the road? I can wait. No. Nope. Nope. Our are always packed and ready. We're pretty much travel experts at this point. Oh, yes. Oh, that's right. Then let's get going. If we run into any trouble, you can count on me to protect you. I am a guard, after all. Yeah, and you can count on me to protect you. I'm a traveler, after all. Okay. Something is happening. Ooh. Oh, look at that. <laughs> this is cool. What is what? Um. Okay. Uh, paper shadows of foraging. What is this? Paper shadows, shadow ruminations. On the bustling streets of Liyue Harbor, you and Paimon are drawn to a painter making paper cutouts. Despite two familiar silhouettes among the items she's preparing. Goba and uh and I don't remember his name. Lil Wei? No, Lil Wei is not this <laughs> time. Okay. Uh, so this is the one. As for this one, what is it? Joyful beasts and their auspices. Uh just a Wushu dance during the Lantern Rite Festival. You and Paimon run into Garmin and another friend practicing the Bushu dance together. He has, pre <clears throat> he has prepared an endlessly fascinating event and is waiting for guests to come and experience it. So these are, uh, I think, not yet locked. Right. Look at the art splashes. This is so pretty. <laughs> okay. 
Okay, well, um, I will uh, tackle these events uh, respectively uh, later, obviously. But now I do have some things that I have to do. It seems. Let me have a look. So we have the uh, festive fever meter. So we have to reach 800 festive fever in order to get. Obviously, I'm going for drumming. That is without a doubt. The <laughs> I'm going to go for for drumming. I'm say. Uh, as for that, the bamboo rain. You have to reach 600 festive. Uh, fever, astrology gifts. Let me let me look at this preview for uh, Zinsha. Nice. Wow. My boy, the unsung hero tension impact, who is also kind of similar to Farina. Now. <laughs> wow. Okay. And about this now? So I can get a lot of, of promotions here. Okay, so you have some things related to uh, our serenity plot, it seems. As for that. Uh, there might be some items related to, uh, yeah, these are furnishings. All right. So that is this. Why is the recommended quests? Not completing the recommended quests will not affect the event gameplay and rewards. But but it will help in the understanding of said event. Hmm. I don't know. Wow, so lively. Yes, it is. Uh, so this is the first event. I mean, mini game. I did that. As for the rest, where should it be? Hmm. Let me have a look. As for the last one, oh, so these are the two Paper Shadow Ruminations and just Wushu Dance. But I think there's another one. I swear I saw another one. Ooh. This is only the first part. I have to go back and see. So this is that, this is the washer dance, and this owl is not yet unlocked because I have to finish the first part. Let me see. Well, 